Good morning, everybody. It is 9.30. We will call the April meeting of the Wood County Board of Supervisors to order at this time. I would ask everybody to please sign in, and it looks like that has occurred. Um, at this time, we'll call on Supervisor Hamilton. Please come forward to the invocation. And while Brad is working his way up here, I'd ask the body to please rise and then remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for allowing us to meet today to do the work that will help the people of Wood County have better lives. Guide us on our work and that it will be, and that it will be your will. Protect our troops, both at home and abroad, and, and our protective services. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Please join in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You do have the packets in front of you or on your desk or iPads, and at this point in time, we would ask for a motion on the minutes from the previous meeting, and I have the motion by fire, the second by Bry. Any discussion on those minutes? Any discussion? All in favor, please signify by aye. Aye. And opposed? And that motion carries unanimously. Uh, under excusals today, we have Supervisor Mahan is excused today. Resignations, we have none. And under appointments, and we'll do all of these at once unless somebody objects, and then we'll pull one. But the Woodland Enhanced Health Services Commission, Supervisor Rosar, the Land Information Council, Brian Springer, fill the unexpired term ending 43018, and the Community uh, Development Block Grant Program, the CDBG, CBDG Housing Committee, Jim Joyce, and Laura Francis for two year terms. And I have a motion by Hamilton to approve those, and a second by Fisher. Any discussion? All in favor, please signify by aye. Aye. Opposed? And that motion carries unanimously. Um, at this point in time, I'm going uh, to jump something. Well, let's go to public comment, I guess, next. Public comment. Do we have any public comment today? Supervisor LaFontaine. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For everybody, today is County Government Day, sponsored by the American Legion. 53 third graders from Washington Elementary School in Marshfield will be visiting the courthouse today. The third graders will participate in voting in the county clerk's office, a science activity with 4-H staff, a health activity with public health department staff. They'll learn about squad cars and the canine dog in the sheriff's department, and they will view the heavy equipment at the highway department. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor LaFontaine. It sounds like they have a full day ahead of them today. Any other public comments? Any public comment? All right, without any public comment, then I will go to acknowledgments and recognitions. There's just two quick ones I'd like to do. First of all, um, although appointed at the last meeting and sworn in in private, uh, some of you have not had the opportunity to meet our newest county board supervisor, Brad Kramer. So, Brad, maybe you want to wave to him or something, let him know who you are at least. Uh, that's Brad. So. This is his first meeting, uh, so go gently on him there, because you're Mr. Fighter, okay? Uh, the second recognition I'd like to do is, um, you know, I get to be chairman, but now we have a new president here. And uh, Joe Zerflu will be sworn in as the Port Edwards Village oh, president this evening. Congratulations on that election, Joe. All that involvement in local government at any level is extremely beneficial to not only the people out there in the community, but to us as a body. I appreciate you are taking on that additional responsibility. Um, I guess with us, nothing else to do there, we go into the packet today. We don't have a real long packet. Uh, and then we have a river block update from Ruben. Uh, the process of moving in has pretty much begun, and we're getting right to that point, uh, finishing up the final touch up over there. So, uh, with nothing further ado, we will go into the packet. Uh, referrals were on right page six, and those went to the appropriate people. We had four of those uh, resolutions coming out of different counties. Um, Bill Condenning, Bill, you're a representative. Are, are you still on the resolutions and laws committee? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, we have a deadline of June, June, remember? Is it June 24th? June 24th. 
to get any resolution in to the Wisconsin Counties Association. So if you have something there that you think needs to move forward, get that to Supervisor Clendon. All right, page seven in the packet begins with the Supervisor Clendon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On, on page seven, right under where it says Clendon is suggested. And I would like to say the what went on in that. That was the human resources um, report. And, and in that report, it indicated that they were going to do a, a study or on the wages for the IT. And I, and, I, and I brought it up to the fact that, to the executive committee, that I think this could turn into another right or wrong could turn into another professional ladder. And I thought this was the wrong way to do this. Uh, and, and so I, I, I am going to make a motion today uh, on this item. And then I would like to make a motion on this item to take, a, to take a wage study committee formation by the Wood County Board here today, considering the five, and also having the five standing committee vice chairs as part of it. It would be the vice chair from the seed committee, one from the judicial and legislative committee, one from the herd committee, one from the safety, health, and human services. If you have this wage study committee, and the chairman of the executive committee would be the facilitator. And with that, that person would have no vote. And they would make a report to the county board by August 15th or the August county board meeting. I so move. <laughs> I'll second that. Okay, for the motion. I hate to have you repeat that. <laughs> um, and a second by Supervisor Powell. Is there any discussion on that? Any discussion? I, the, I think the clerk needs some clarification. We haven't seen this before, nor heard it in any way whatsoever. So, so let me tell you, Bill, what I um, okay. have. Um, that you make a motion to take to form a wage study committee, uh, considering what? Considering? Look, the wages of uh, the, the wage study like we had once before. Okay. Five years ago, we was, said we were going to have one. So now this is five years later. So, so reviewing, reviewing, reviewing the study. Uh, yes. Reviewing wage. Okay. And, and what it consisted of the chairman of the executive committee and the five other vice chairs of the other committees would be it. And the chair of the executive uh, committee as the facilitator with no voting powers. Yes. Did everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. No. Can you read that back again? So the motion is uh, to form a wage study committee to review um, where we are today as far as the previous wage, wage study that we had done, um, the members of that committee that is being created would be the uh, vice chairs of the five uh, standing committee members um, and the chair of the executive committee uh, as the facilitator and that the executive committee chair would have no voting powers and they are to provide a report uh, by the August County Board meeting. Okay, we are to the discussion point, uh, I guess, on this resolution. Supervisor Wagner, I saw you raise your hand. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, one thing that we do know that needs to be done, and, and I, I chaired the last uh, compensation committee, and that was about five or six years ago. Uh, one thing we said we would need to do is take that one line, which is the, um, the market value of each position, and periodically update that, that line. There's no need for a full-blown wage study, just the market conditions. So I'm going to oppose this, this motion. Further discussion? Further discussion? Supervisor Clendenning? Uh, so, in, in, in opposing it, anybody opposing it would say, it's all right that the, the you know, HR committee or the HR office would would do individual reviews of everybody's wages whenever they wanted them. And that's what that's what it said in the minutes of this. So so it would just go on. If somebody else wanted it besides IT, they somebody health and human services could go to IT and say they want a wage adjustment or 
consideration. I, I, and I disagree with that. I, I think this is a good way to review it all before the budget time and do it. I, I, I see no reason why not to. Can I just ask a clarification? You said human services could go to IT. I don't think no, that's no. what you meant. A any of the departments could go there. Go, because that's what I ask. Go, 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 go to, to HR. HR. HR, okay. Right. Right. When you said human services, I wasn't sure where it was going. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Further discussion? Yeah. Any further discussion? Supervisor Lightman. Okay, so I'm, I'm new to this. Um, I wasn't on the county board five years ago, but it seems to me that period of time in some form, you know, I don't know if it'd have to be entirely redone, but in some form, why not look back at, haven't we had, I think Portage County has hired some of our people away from us. Um, why not take another look in some form? I, I don't know if I'm saying to amend the motion, but I, I think five years is a sufficient period of time that we should look again. I'll, I'll vote for the motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If I may address this to the Vice Chair. Uh, Mr. Vice Chair, what does this do to the, uh, when we do our evaluations, I'll pick on highway right now. Uh, when we do our evaluations in the fall, we, uh, we had some really good ideas where we moved some employees up two notches, you know, recommended in their, their review. It seems like, I mean, I don't know how I'm going to vote on it, but it seems like it's going to usurp a little of our, uh, our highway committee. If you understand. Can I understand? Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Turfu. Um, the uh, uh, there's a difference between the strips and the and the classifications. Mm -hmm. There are classifications at which time, if, if the job, if the nature of the job changes, the job description changes, then they can apply for reclassification among those into those those weighted scales. So there, I don't, I forget how many we've got. Let's see, I think there are like 18 scales or something like that. So if we, if we see that someone has taken on more responsibility, we can move them from a nine to a ten, and they can move from a step one. They could be in a step five and nine and move to a step. Uh, it used to be they could only move to a step less than ten, but the the ability that we gave the committees is that they can move them along those steps within that pay grade to a higher rate. It's pretty complicated, but that's the thing that can happen. Basically, what, what we were suggesting is that that market rate, and this is what Mr. Clendenning is, is talking about, about other counties hiring away from us, because we haven't given raises to keep within the market rate, we need to look at that market rate, which is, I think, the midpoint of each pay scale, the mid-step of each pay scale. So that, that's what has to be looked at. And now I, I've only been... Uh, I've only been on, uh, I've only been the chairman of this committee now for, for two months, and I've also only been on the, the executive committee for, I think, just short of a year, I think. And uh, basically, it's so I want to get the executive committee to budget for that study. We you remember how bad the budget was this year. I didn't dare ask for the money for that market study this year. I'm going to try and squeeze it out of the budget next year if we possibly can. So that's why. It's it's a matter of, of getting to it. it, it's, it I don't think uh, I don't think the things that um, um, uh, they, they were talking about here is uh, you know I think I, IT has been changing dramatically, and I think what's been going on in IT is people have been changing the the, the job descriptions themselves have been changing, and those kinds of classifications can be solid. They, the departments can select that and bring them to the executive committee for approval once they're they're done. So so yeah, there, so he's right. As far as changing the classification, moving from a step nine or from a classification nine to ten, that does go to IT. And they send it out to our favorite people, Carlson Detman, to to be, be do that. But the market study is something that we can do ourselves, and we don't have to use Carlson Detman for it all. We can use any consultant we wish. So that, that's what we I hope. Does that, does that help, Mr. Reserve, or did I just muddy the water some more? You won't believe this, Mr. Vice Chair, but I followed that whole dissertation. <laughs> I am so happy to hear that, sir. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Supervisor Clendenin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
if it's so easy for the highway department to do this, why isn't it that easy then for IT to do that, or any other department that wants to go to, to the HR department to have it done? That, that, yes, you answer his question, and that's fine, but well, why, why don't IT just move up like they want to and, and go to that? I, I, I think this is just avoiding the fact that we have to go through this thing. Any other discussion? Any other discussion? All right, I ask you to get the board set here. And I'd ask you to please vote. Freezer combination unit. 
fiscal note to transfer $30,130 from available balance and contingency to the Edgewater Haven Dietary Function. At the time of this request, the funds available in contingency are $450,000. The adjustment to the budget totals $30,130. And again, you've heard the reading of the resolution. I have a motion by Clendenning, a second by Hamilton to approve that resolution. Any discussion? Any discussion? Please vote. Million people 
and their water problems, uh, getting water from the Des Moines River and the Raccoon River with nitrates. Um, I talked to you last month about a liquid manure spill in Brown County of 100,000 gallons and how that manure spill ran for three and a half miles before it was turned. I didn't think I'd address you again, but with the coming of spring in the last just couple of days, three, two, three weeks, an incredible amount of things have happened with water issues in the state. And I, I do want to take just a couple minutes to, to inform you about that. Um, from St. Croix County, this, this was reported by WPR. Um, a dairy there called Emerald Sky, there was a leak in December. And the leak went on, I think, unnoticed for some time, and then unreported until March 29th. So it went on for three months. Um, the DNR is still investigating that. It was reported initially to be tens of thousands of gallons. Um, I heard last night it was over 100,000 gallons. So that brings it to the equivalent of the Brown County spill that I talked about um, last month. Um, where that liquid manure went was it went into a wetland that was adjacent to the dairy. Um, and so the DNR is still investigating that. Um, Emerald Sky Dairy has asked for a permit to expand operations. And that, that's at the end of March. And of course, the DNR always approves those. Um, just listen as I go to the, the next or maybe the next two, and, and I'll bring you back to this in a minute. Um, then let's go to Green County, which is southern Wisconsin, centered around Monroe. Um, this is April 7th, so just a week and a half ago. And this comes from Green County Supervisor Chris Marion. Um, Tull's Pinnacle Dairy there has received permission, a final permit, to expand their operations. And the, wood, the, the county conservationist in Greene County put some very strict conditions on that permit approval. And so here's the interesting thing about this. The owner of that dairy, which coincidentally owned the St. Croix dairy, went to the chair of the Land and Water Conservation Committee. Um, I guess our equivalent of that would be, would be Hildy. With his lawyer and demanded that that vote be approved, or that the, the permit be approved, and he threatened the lawsuit. He followed that up, again with his lawyer, and letters to all the committee members. So all of us that serve on seed, um, we wouldn't have been threatened with that. Um, and of course, the irony here is it's the same owner of the, the two, the Western County and, and the Southern County. The next one comes from La Crosse County. I've got four that I want to talk to you about. This is the towns of Onalaska and Holland, and this was reported in the La Crosse Tribune. Um, there, just like has happened in Wood County, nitrate levels near Onalaska, I think the western part of the town and the western part of Holland, went between 10 and 20 parts per million nitrates. You remember in Wood County at Tower Road and Highway 13, we were at 12.6. So Jim Rombolski, the head of the La Crosse County Health Department, sent notices to 2,000 residents in those towns of Onalaska and Holland telling them, telling them what happened. I want to read to you what she said. I have to find it here. This is the health department chair. Bear with me a minute as I turn pages. She said, it can take years and decades for this to occur, the getting to nitrate levels of 10 to 20 parts per million, and show up. And it can take years and decades for the levels to go back down. In the short term, first and foremost, you need to test your water. And of course, we've done some of that in Wood County. And in the long term, we need to try to better protect our land, and so we're protecting our groundwater. Then, Jennifer Schilling, 
who you'll remember is, uh, what's that, 32, Senate District 32, I believe. Jennifer Schilling weighed in, and she said, years of Republican budget cuts and staff reductions at the Department of Natural Resources are threatening our state's drinking water and putting communities at risk. These problems aren't new, but they are certainly getting worse as major violations are being ignored and swept under the rug. If we don't act to improve enforcement standards and protect access to clean drinking water, families are going to continue to face these serious health threats and economic challenges. Okay, so the last one I want to talk to you about is right back here to Wood County again then. Last Monday, the uh, Wisconsin Conservation Congresses held meetings in all 72 counties. Um, attendance was over 4,000 in the 72 counties. Um, the intent of these meetings, the Wisconsin Conservation Congress meetings, is to gauge public opinion on outdoor and environmental issues. And so three that stood out in my mind, and before the time I spent on county board, was sand mine permits. The vote was 3,226 to 783 and said the state should place a moratorium on sand mine permits. So those numbers amount to a margin of four to one. Just listen as I go on here. Okay, the next issue they discussed in Pittsville and across the whole state last Monday was large livestock farm permits. There the vote was 3,310 to 695. That's a margin of five to one. And this is what the people of Wisconsin asked for that the state should suspend large livestock farm permits if pollution impacts require more study. And of course, you know I think they do. The last one was on high capacity wells and that would have been Senate Bill 76 that most of us followed about three weeks ago. The vote there, 3,988 to 231, that's a margin of 17 to one and the statement was attendees said they wanted the state to suspend approval for high capacity wells that deplete surface waters. And so what we've got going on then in this state, and I think we've been slow to recognize it, you've heard me talking about it for three years. Um, when George Kraft addressed our seed committee um, a week and a half ago, one of the comments as I was taking notes that, that he made is that we have a state legislature that is not listening to our state hydrologists. The science is there, they're just not listening. And that problem is compounded with a lack of attention to what, what's going on. So I think, um, I didn't think I was gonna stand up and talk again today, but I think you're gonna be hearing from me again. Um, if any of you, there, there's a few of us on the Wood County Board that have had a real interest in this. If some of the others of you that keep hearing it time after time, if you want to join with us, um, you just, I, you know who we are. You just need to talk to us about the water issues. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Supervisor Hinkle. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to bring everyone's attention to page 67, where you will see a handsome little uh, plaque that was given to our own Tracy Arnold because she was recognized as the outstanding conservation employee educator. So she's out there getting out to the schools and getting out to the public, educating people on conservation in a very positive way. Thank you, Mr. Director Hamill. So we're through pages 64 through 66, the minutes of the seed committee. Uh, page 67 was the beginning of the land conservation of the letter of comments. They would run through page 71. Any questions 67 through 71? Supervisor Clendenin? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, in economic development, well, I just want to say one thing we had the uh, Prairie Chicken Festival. And in my estimation, in a lot of them, we got a lot of letters about it. And I think it was a very much of a success. We had over 24 people that did see prairie chickens and that were in the blind. We had 14 to 15 members on a birding tour. We also had 42 people at the library. 
and we had 44 people at the meet-in for lunch and, and things like that in what we call our grand fair, our, our gala we had. It. it was very successful with a lot of speakers, and we hope to have one next year, and I'm sure we will. So, hey, I want to thank the county for the money, and it was well spent in my estimation. Thank you. All right, beginning on page 72, uh, the monthly letter again comments from UW Extension, beginning with Peter Manley's, those go 72 through 77, which is 72 through 77. Uh, comments from Planning and Zoning, uh, beginning with Director Grunenberg's at 78, going through page 81, 78 through 81. Page 82, minutes of the Judicial and Legislative Committee, March 21st. Their minutes from April 7th on page 83, as well as 84 and 5. Pete Gaston holds our court counsel's letter to that committee, his monthly letter of comments on 86. Uh, Child Support Director of Ruins report on, from his agency on page 87. Notice of injury and claims begin on 88. 9, 90, and then that takes us to page 91 in the packet and a resolution from the Judicial and Legislative Committee. This will be resolution 17-4-4 to support efforts to close commercial property assessment loopholes. A motion by Hamilton, a second by Clendenning. Any discussion on this resolution? Any discussion on the resolution? Okay, please vote. Things are looking real good, uh, and I'm sure there will be other opportunities as we're in the process of moving in. 
So I'm going to turn the floor over to Ruben. If you have any questions, you can direct them directly to him. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. <laughs> We're nearing the end. Hopefully, next month will be the last time we have to provide an update. Uh, this week, we have contractors, only a few, in the building finishing up punch list items. The project is still on schedule and within budget, which is great news because this is the last week for everything to get finished. We have a final inspection scheduled for Friday morning, and we have two departments scheduled to move into the building next week, starting with uh, Parks and Forestry on Monday, followed by the Health Department uh, Tuesday. It'll probably take a couple days for them to move in. So we will meet our deadline of getting them out of their current location by May 1st. Things have been going well. We've had uh, some things to deal with, but we've addressed them as they've come up, and things are looking good. So I was hoping that I would have more time in the last week or two to gather some uh, updated photos to show you guys. You can see there aren't any. Uh, we, the Riverblock subcommittee is meeting following the county board meeting over at Riverblock again up on the third floor. If you guys didn't see that um, meeting listed, we will be over there. So if anybody cares to uh, take a look at the building, uh, we'll be over there at 11. And um, next month I will have more photos with things finished up and, and to show you guys more of that. So um, if there's any questions, anybody. Well, I encourage you to take the opportunity to take a look at it, see what's over there, it's, and I'm sure we'll have an open house at some point in time. But it's been encouraging, it's been on budget, it's been on time, and it will be a great fit with our other county facilities. It, they've really done a nice job, and they had indulged me and let me occasionally take a look at it through the press. Supervisor Clendenning, looks like you grabbed a microphone. Uh, I just want to say it's, it's not scheduled for immediately after the county board meeting, it's scheduled for 11 o'clock. Okay, it wasn't fun. We didn't have more meeting yet. Mm -hmm. um, Karen Madden, our, our, I talked to Ruben about this, was in my office looking for some information about you know, timetables uh, of when departments are moving over there. She's uh, intending to do a story because obviously the public needs to know, you know where they go for our services. So she's going to coordinate with Ruben and, and so there should be an article in the paper shortly so that uh, people know what the status of the departments they're looking for are. Any other business that needs to come before the board today? Any other business? Our next meeting is scheduled for May 16th. May 16th. Um, if you'll notice uh, on the front uh, table here, there are uh, proceedings books. Um, all of the activities of the county board for the last year. So uh, if you're interested in that, uh, please take one. So we have May 16th again. I want to welcome Supervisor Kramer uh, to his first meeting. Those of you who have not had the opportunity to meet him, maybe go up and introduce yourselves. Uh, the last thing is, our board has always had a tradition, obviously, of you know, motion to adjourn and second and voting on it. I can also declare meetings adjourned. Would you prefer to do it the way we always have done it or just declare them adjourned? What's the declare it adjourned. Okay. okay. Uh, with nothing further ado, we will declare this meeting adjourned. <laughs>